Next question is from Mo Strength Gains. Lots of people have older family members they care for. If you were to recommend a few movements that would help them build some strength, what would they be? I know Sal has worked with lots of older clients, so maybe this one's for him. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and sit this out, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you guys have worked with a lot of older clients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I, I stick with the young ones. Yeah, so. no, I think because you talk that you really liked it so much yeah. that people just assume. It's that just because I, at one point, my studio. Uh, I mean, we were next to a hospital, and I trained a lot of doctors, and then the doctors started referring me a lot mm -hmm. of their patients, and all their patients were in that older older age category, and I enjoy it. But all right, here's one of the best exercises uh, you could do with. First off. Uh, no, never overestimate uh, somebody in, in an older age group. Never overestimate the recovery ability. The, the, the lightest, smallest activity that's outside of what they're used to will cause an effect in their body, will cause change. You overdo it and they'll get sore and injured very easily. So, and this I, I learned very quickly. It's like, oh, let's do yeah. some standing lunges. And then they didn't show up for the next session because they couldn't move. Yeah, you got to really simplify it. Yes. Here's the best exercise, okay? Sit down, stand up. It's mm -hmm. a very basic, it's a squat, but mm -hmm. you're sitting down, so you have something to aim for. You could stick your hips back, and it doesn't require as much control and stability. I'd have my, my older clients reach forward with their hands, stand in front of a chair or a bench, and if the bench was too low, I'd put, like, I'd stack pads on it or whatever and slowly progress them to go, to go lower, and they would just sit down. The goal was not to plop down. It was to softly sit down, stop for a second, get themselves, you know, gathered, and then stand back up, and that was one of the staple exercises I did and it's so functional because they do that. They do that, you know, throughout the day. Yeah, exactly. Like you have to start like at that level and, and really assess like where their strength level is first. Like that would probably be like one of the first things to get them to sit in a chair. But also I, I guess I could just test this on like everybody actually, when I would, uh, you know, get a new client, I would, I would place them on the ground yes. and on their back and I would see, okay, I want to just first see how you get up off of the ground. And that's a very, very straightforward, very simple. Like I'm not even intervening or, or cueing them, coaching, nothing. I want to see how they do it. And then I come in and I kind of show them like the way that I want them to do it. And also like, you know, and then we turn that into an exercise and uh, it, it's just one of those things. It's a life function. Like if you're on the ground, you need to know, you need to have the strength to be able to get up and do that properly with good mechanics. Dude, you have no idea just how, I, so I worked with uh, a, an amazing physical therapist that I learned a lot from. She actually rented space in my facility and she was, one of her specialties was working with uh, advanced age population. And she did a lot of that, Justin. Mm -hmm. And why did she do it? Well, first off, there's a, you're using a lot of muscle. So just going, getting on the floor and standing up is an exercise by itself. Yeah. I mean, you could turn it into a Turkish getup if you want to get real advanced. Yeah, you can, but you don't have to necessarily. No, but the reason why she did it is because she's like, this is a skill that they're going to need. And if they lose this skill, it makes them very vulnerable to There's the statistics problem. on that. Yep. Yes. There's statistics on uh, on somebody who can get up off the ground versus somebody who can't, like how long they live. The risk of death yeah, goes up through the roof. Yeah, dramatically. And the amount of how much their longevity is like increased by like two decades yep. by, by being able to do that. I'm right with you, Justin. That's exactly... Now, what Sal said sometimes is like the the, the regression, right? That's, oh, yeah. Because like, yeah. there's some clients that... They can't I, get I, off the ground. No, yeah, totally. they, And you know that. You can tell by the way they walk and they move. Uh, they have a hard time sitting down in the chair in front of you to sign up for their training. Like yeah. You know, like, okay, I'm not going to put this person on the ground because we could be here for an hour trying mm -hmm. to get them out of the ground. I have to lift them up yeah, off the floor. So 100% what Sal said is is a great regression. And I many clients, I train bring the little plastic chair out to the, the mm -hmm. weight room floor and we would stand up, sit down. And, and even clients where I actually had to assist them. I'd have them hold on to my index fingers yeah. while they and I'd have them slow down not just plop down I, right. wanted, I wanted you to slow I would do that too with the TRX so they could hold on to something yes. and kind of just like slowly descend yeah. but I, I would always work towards can we get up off the ground and then the progression to that is actually can you get up off the ground with no hands oh yeah, yeah. So that is a, is actually I know a lot of yep. thirty year olds. Yes, that can't do that. it is. That that's a skill that I always go back to myself to make sure that I don't that it doesn't get too difficult. If mm -hmm. I ever find myself like challenged personally to do that, I know there's mobility work that I need that I'm neglecting, and it always reminds me to get back to that. Yep. So I would love to take a client at an advanced age, start them on the ground, just like Justin, see how they get up without me coaching or telling. Because the other thing too. 
that tells you a lot about their discrepancies too, like on what mm -hmm. the, what side they naturally gravitate right. towards yep. because they'll go to the side that's more dominant and then they'll, they'll avoid the side they're weaker and they can't support themselves on. So it tells you a little bit about their movement patterns already. And then the goal would be, can we do this without using your hands and then, or can we progress it to like yeah. a Turkish get Yeah, The three most valuable exercises that I did with older populations. And again, I'm speaking generally because on the, I, I, on an individual basis, there's always big, you know, differences. But generally speaking, it was sit down and stand up on a bench or a chair. It was some kind of a row with a band or a yes. cable, just focusing on pulling the shoulders back and dropping them because that forward shoulder gets really, really bad as people get older. And then the other one was just reaching up. It was no oh, yeah. weight. Oh, yeah. okay. It was no weight. It was, and we would do it sitting first. We'd sit, I'd stand behind them so that I could get them to engage their core and not yes. have to arch so much. And I'd say, okay, stick your arm up as far as you can. And they would always stop like, you know, right here or whatever. And then I'd have them hold on to a stick and I'd pull their arms up a little bit. And then I'd say, okay, now hold them up here and then let go of the stick and see if you could support yourself. No weight, but that would make such a huge impact. And again, yes. here's the idea. The view is, Look at the skills that they need to be independent, which include sitting down, standing up, getting up off the floor, maintaining good posture, and reaching up above and their heads so they can grab their things. Arm over. Yeah. That's it. Those three, those right there are are very functional, like necessary skills to remain independent. Just train those. You don't need a lot of weight. And now, if they get good at them, then you can start to add weight. But I had clients that that was all we did. I mean, we just did those yeah. things, and we took our time, and then and it and it was really really impactful. And then. One more thing. This one actually I'm doing with my grandmother right now to improve her proprioceptive ability is- Balance uh, on one leg. No, no. She can't even, she barely can stand on two. <laughs> it, it, is, is I would have her, I have her sit on a chair and I take a balloon and it's just blown up with air, no helium or whatever. And I pop it to her and her job is to pop it back to me with her hands. And it's just to improve hand-eye coordination and proprioception. Sounds silly, um, but it's actually a very- standard exercise that you do rehab exercise that you would see no that's a, that's a great one and it, you did, this question by the way too we're like we are definitely I, I noticed we're kind of bouncing around as far as like envisioning like where this level this yes. person is mm -hmm. because I, I would love if this person could stand on one leg or, or that's cha just challenging that. that's a great exercise yeah, just yeah. balance yeah getting someone to stand on one leg and balance like that is is really good for so, like a client if they can do that right yeah. like you said you're in your case she can't even hardly stand on two so she's not ready for that but that would I be had a, some old clients that would be a great that would be a, <laughs> yeah. a great goal is to be able to do that absolutely